Welcome, everybody. My name is Angela Andrew. I'm a product evangelist from Alio Photos. And today I'm joined by one of our senior support specialists, Matthew, and he's going to share with us different ways that you can organize and rename your files and folders in Mylio Photos. Welcome, Matthew. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me again. So always welcome. I see some familiar faces and let's jump into this. Great. All right, so as Angela said, today's topic is file and folder renaming. Uh, to even get started, uh, the most important part to start with is what are folders in Mylio? Uh, they are the basis of everything that we're gonna be doing. So when we make changes to the file system or to folders, we're making changes to the files and folders in the file system. So there's two different types of folders in Mylio. If you were to click on folder view twice, you'll be brought to this like top level where you can see these folders. These act as uh, anchor points for your library. So they do have some slightly different behaviors than if they are a subfolder living inside one of these top level folders. So uh, I do want to just reiterate that whatever you see in folder view is a direct representation to what you see in the file system. Uh, you can even right click and choose show in finder or show in explorer. Uh, if you have an external drive, it will be there. And whatever folders you see within Mylio pictures will match what you see in the file system. So to rename a folder or a file, uh, there's a couple of different ways in Mylio. So if you're just doing one folder or one file, you can select it and then go over to the info panel and change the name. Uh, like I said, that also works for media as well. Um, and if for some reason the info panel is hidden or it's not open, you can always just right click and choose rename and it will open it for you. Uh, that's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, that's how you rename an individual thing in Mylio, but you can also do this in the file system. So if we were to show an explorer and rename a subfolder, we can see Mylio picks up that change very quickly. Not really a real camera, but <laughs> point made. So these are subfolders, uh, going back to the difference between a top level folder and a sub folder. Top level folders act a little different. If you were to rename one of them uh, in the file system, Mylio will lose its link to that folder and it will be classified as missing. Uh, so nothing new would be able to be synced to this folder until that missing folder is resolved in some way. Uh, there's two different ways that you can fix this. Uh, the first would be that you can um, locate the missing folder and choose to reconnect and go pick the folder that you renamed. Uh, you can, if, if the folder is just you have no idea where it went, but another device has it. You can just say sync from another device and one of your other devices that has everything synced will just bring everything back. Uh, or the third option, put the folder back where it was or rename it back to the name that Mylio is looking for and Mylio will relink to it. So there are some particulars about renaming stuff in the file system. Uh, but you can do it, and Mylio will just pick up any of the changes that you make. Uh, so that would be renaming individual things either outside of Mylio or within Mylio, uh, which brings us to the next topic here, auto renaming. So Mylio has a great tool for auto renaming multiple files at the same time. Uh, one, I guess, tip to trying to do this is that you do have to have multiple media selected. 
if you're in a situation where you have all these different media spread out across different folders and you want to rename all of them, you can go up to the more menu in the top corner and hit show media. And it will condense everything as one view. Uh, you can also flip that back to show all your folders again as show as container. So when we have all of this media from all these different folders right here, you can select all or just select the ones you want. And you can rename. So there's a couple different options for renaming. The default options here is to just add a prefix and then a sequence. You can also make it match the metadata of the file. So that would be your month, day, and then a sequence number, or maybe just your month. Uh, if you're shooting with multiple cameras, I know it is popular to add in the camera information as well. And then there's the custom section. This is a choose your own adventure. So you can add pretty much anything you want in here down to camera serial number. Uh, however you want to rename is, is your, your choice in here. Um, for my purposes, I like the year month sequence. Uh, I'm not shooting anything too crazy, um, but a lot of the photos that I take or my wife takes are on, on an iPhone and iPhones shoot and name all of their images, IMG underscore some sort of four digits. When you hit that 10,000, it just cycles back to double zero or quadruple zero. Uh, or if you get a new phone or multiple new phones over the years, then you'll end up having many files with the same name, IMG you know, 0001. So by applying this you know, year month to the file names, it kind of gets separated a little bit so it's easier to find them uh, even outside of Mylio while you're viewing them in the file system. So when you select one of the options, you are given a warning that this is changing the files in the file system and it cannot be undone. So we will go ahead and say rename the files. So now we can see that the files have been renamed. This is I am noticing that the 19 got cut off. I did not see that when I was testing this before. But that's all right. What got cut off, Matthew? Uh, I was just looking at the file name. It has 05-1. Oh, you huh. know why? Because I did your month. I didn't do your month day. Gotcha. And for those who are following along, I did put a link into the chat with um, that takes you to the page in the manual that goes over all of the different custom things that you can do for file naming. And I also shared my file naming convention in the chat as well. So if you want to give that a try, if that works for you, um, just because it works for me doesn't mean it's for everybody. But what I do is I put the date and then keep the original file name. So. One, one thing to keep in mind, I, I just wanted to mention this because I followed your link, Angela. Um, mm -hmm. I've done renaming before, but I, I never looked at this page. Down at the bottom of the page where it has custom file name options, mm -hmm. people need to be aware of the difference between the date times that start with a C and the ones that don't, because the current date time is going to put right now where the other ones put use the metadata for it the one the the year d uh yeah you're absolutely right yeah it, it's i made the mistake the first time and i thought what what's going on here luckily it doesn't <laughs> affect the metadata but i went back and figured maybe i should pay more attention to the pull down screen because i i didn't go hunting it down in the manual but it's an important note if you're going to rename your files be very careful of those that start with the letter c yeah good good catch so one of my I'll, I'll say favorites, but one of the ones that I notice I, I use frequently is this uh, lowercase o. So if you already like the file name, but you just need to add some metadata to it, um, the, the lowercase o is a great way to do that. So um, yeah, like I said, if you just wanted to add a 
the information is already there, but you're just like, oh, I just want to add the camera or I just want to add the, the date, but everything else you want to keep the same, you can use that. Yeah, that's part of mine as well. All right, so that would be renaming multiple files at the same time if they're already in Mylio. But if they're not in Mylio, there is an option to imp import or to rename while you are importing. So one of the fastest ways to initiate a copy import is to drag and drop from the file system onto the Mylio app window. Uh, this is for Mac and Windows. You can just drag and drop. And you get this copy import. So when you are doing the, imp the copy import, you have the option to exclude duplicates. Um, and then you can also hit show advanced settings and get some other options. So we get the same file renaming uh, options as before. And then we also have folder organization. So I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but as you can see, it is the next thing on the list. So uh, it's not quite renaming folders, but it will put stuff in the folders you want it to be named. So I consider it a type of renaming. So uh, while performing that copy import, you can, of course, do that. All right. When it comes to auto organizing folders, there are also some particulars to be aware of. This is a function that can only be run on a folder itself. So if you're, uh, let me see if I can find one that just has some loose media in it. So if you were to run the auto organize function, which is available from the organize menu, you can see it's actually grayed out when I'm just viewing the folder itself. But if I go back into the view and select the folder, I will have the option to organize. So the one particular is that it can only be run on a folder itself. If you have some loose media that you do want to organize, uh, you do have to put it in a folder. So you can do that by right click and hit move to folder, or you can add it to the Mylio clipboard and put it wherever you would like. Yes, all right. The other thing to note is that when you run the auto organize folders, it will stay in the top level folder that it is living in. So if we were to go into like this Mylio inbox here and try and reorganize the inbox, everything will stay in the inbox. So let's run it. Uh, we have some very similar options uh, as renaming, where date is going to probably be the most popular, uh, separated into year and then month in the subfolder there. Um, and there are all those custom options. So same warning that these are changes made to the file system. Uh, they cannot be undone. So we can see the icon actually just changed here. There's now four subfolders. But you can see it stayed in this top level folder. Uh, so one thing I did notice is that the date for this photo is not correct. It is something where it is. Mylio does sort this by date. So if you were to chain, you can run the auto organize any any time. So if you sorted everything and you're like, hey, wait a second, this doesn't belong here. You can change the date and then you can rerun the auto organize and it will sort your things to reflect those new dates. So we can see it did remove that file and now the flyers winning the Stanley Cup is now properly dated and organized. Now, Matthew, what happens if some of those images have fuzzy dates? So the non-specific, like not a full time stamp, how does auto organize handle those? Let's do it. So, 
you want to just call it a year? Sure. Just call it 1974. But let's move the file somewhere else too. <laughs> it doesn't like that file name. <laughs> Something popped up. Oh, okay. There it is. Great, and then we'll delete this folder. Organize folders, and then we can say year a month just to see what it does, but if yeah, there's only a right. year. It puts it as January 1st. Okay, good to know. And let me see if I can make this a little bigger. If you see that double squiggly icon in the bottom right corner, it's a fuzzy date indicator. Perfect. Now, uh, one thing to note with using the organized folders, if you are sharing your Mylio, that whatever folders you have Mylio pointed to and watching, if you're sharing that with, say, Lightroom or On One or Luminar Knee or any of these other applications that also watch folders, by doing an auto organize here, it might mess up. The catalog in another another uh, application. So that's something to be aware of if you decide to start running this. So for instance, for me, um, on my main folders, I wouldn't do this on the folders that Lightroom is watching because I know that's going to make Lightroom lose connection to all those folders because everything's going to be a new name and sorted into different places. So that's just something to be aware of. Yep. So the, one of the last points that I have here is using the custom function. Uh, if you already have some folder, some folder hierarchies that you would like to keep, you can specify that in your custom path. So when you go to organize folders and you choose custom. So if for some reason I did want to put these in, so First thing is it always stays in the top level folder and then you work your way down the hierarchy or into the hierarchy. So we're in the Mylio pictures folder. And in this case, we'll say that we want to, I'll use the NEF folder as an example. Then you put in a slash and then sort it by year and month. So we'll say, yes, do it. And we'll watch that all of these folders will then be reorganized and I can send them into a different folder, which is then sorted by year and month. Oh, so, that's awesome. I didn't even know you could do that. I learned something new today. Yeah, so a lot of the time Me you don't really want 2022 to go right at the right inside my Leo pictures or whatever your library folder is. That's um, a cool feature. I like that. Yeah, I'm going to have to doc get that documented and put in the manual. <laughs> So you would just take whatever folder name you want those to be moved to. So existing yes. folder. Yep. Yeah, I can. And that. then slash and then your custom name. Yes. So organize folders and then yes, whatever the name you want it to be. Is. That's awesome. So you don't need a leading slash. It assumes your photo root by default. <laughs> It assumes it will start at the the top of the top level folder. Okay. So in this case, my this folder that is open is my Leo Pictures. Right. Um, okay. I get so it. If I, if I were to go a little like deeper into here and say, oh, I only want to sort this, I'll, I'll pick this one here. So if we hit organize folders and just say your month, this will go into the top of my Leo pictures. I got it. Does it. not stay in its path. I got it. So now if we go into 2022, yeah, or rather we can see that these were not from 2022. 
that's but, neat if you need to reorganize. So you, that's a really neat feature. You can always reorganize anytime. Uh, like I said, if you organize something, you're looking through and you say, hey, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't belong there because the date is incorrect. Um, then you can change the date and then just run reorganize and it will move it back. So if the folder that you're sending images to already has things broken up into that year month format, will it do it will not duplicate the folders that are there. It'll just add things to the folders yep. where they belong. It will merge. Yes. Merge. Awesome. Wow. It's a uh, very nice. Yeah. yeah. So if you already have a folder named 2022, then it's not going to make a new one. It will just put everything in there. Let's see here. Uh, Lynn asks, why do some folders not have a picture? Great question. So this one here that says skipped, we can see that there's 27 subfolders, but there's no media in it. So whereas like this testing folder has 2,025 media and 194 folders. So that just means it's, a, it's an empty folder or it's a folder That's that has folder. other folders, but no actual pictures or other media. One way that you can find empty folders is to sort by date in ascending order. Uh, empty folders don't have a date, so they are always shown first. Ah, that's good to know. And then, of course, it takes whatever date is in your metadata to sort from there. Now, the okay. one that says pink panoramas that has four, why is that one black? Uh, because that one, doesn't, that one doesn't render. Got it. So either it's like a, a super underexposed shot, it's that something that's unsupported. Yeah, I have some okay. fun things in my library. Like this one. <laughs> <Not faces. laughs> if you're if you think fruit having faces is is real, I have seen that in some very strange places. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So that is everything for renaming files, renaming folders, and using your metadata to help get things organized. Uh, both in Mylio with what you see and with what is organized in the file system. Uh, I do want to stress that that Mylio's folder view is a direct one-to-one -one relationship with whatever whatever's in the file system. So uh, Windows does not like ARWs, but <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, whatever you see in Mylio is there in the folder. So the things that we talked about today are going to change what is in your file system. Awesome. Well, that was highly informative. And I, I walked away learning a couple of things that I didn't know either. So I really appreciate that, Matthew. Are there any questions? I got two, two statements I'd like to make. One sure. is back in the beginning, when you showed an example of someone who might get the strange idea to rename the root Milio's photo photo folder, you said you could bring it in from a from another device. You really only want to do that if the other device is a vault. Otherwise, you're just going to get previews and thumbnails, etc. So you got to make sure it's a vault when you do that. Uh, the other thing is on renaming media, and this is something I ran into and ended up doing a complete re-merge out of Lightroom. Luckily, I hadn't deleted it all yet. Um, when you do renames on a large batch of pictures, for instance, my plan was I was going to do a rename year by year and then restart the sequence every year. It doesn't work like that. It does the rename. And this might be because of how my albums are, are, my folders are set up. My folders are set up year, month, and day. But it does, in fact, that's exactly why it does it this way. It does it by the day. So it starts over again every single day with the, with the new count. And it, it, it's not obvious at first why it's doing that till you kind of sit down and look at it a little bit. Um, it, so if anybody's coming from Lightroom, or on one or any other large dam, it doesn't rename the, the same way those large dams rename. It, it's, an, it's an entirely different structure. It works fine, but it'll panic you at first. 
Yeah, so some things do work just slightly differently and you have to look at it and go, wait a second, okay, wait, what just happened? <laughs> exactly. And, and it, it, it took me a little while to figure it out, but I, I did figure it out before I was stupid enough to send a question to you. <laughs> <laughs> or I got desperate and had to read the manual. <laughs> ah, well, you know, that's what it's there for, so. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, those are the only two points I had. That, uh, great presentation. Thank you for doing that. Awesome. And I learned a couple of things too, and I thought I'd pretty well mastered it at this point. <laughs> you know, it's it amazes me. I'm still learning things about this program after using it for about a year and writing the manual and like, oh, yeah. I guess I need to document that. Good, good so, stuff. Definitely. Any other questions? All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and turn you guys loose for the day. Thank you so much for joining us, Matthew. Very much appreciate this presentation. Extremely helpful. Um, so much good stuff crammed into about 25 minutes. So, you know, can't really beat that. I want to wish you guys a wonderful rest of your day. And next week is Thanksgiving here in the U.S. We will not be having coffee break that week, but we will resume the following week. And I hope you'll join us. We do have some other webinars coming up later this week. So I hope you'll be able to jump in and join us there. So take a look at the events page in the community for more information. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.